Good morning and welcome. This is quite an important day for all of us. Uh, and I'd like to thank, first of all, of course, Nigel and the Fishmongers for hosting this day and the support you've given us and the encouragement you've given us towards this. Additionally, of course, I should thank you as supporters and those interested parties who've come here today. This day is going to be, I hope, the beginning of something quite important, albeit long-lasting. Lastly, if I might just thank the organizers for today. It's been a lot of work for the people behind the scenes and in front of us. And thank you very much for all you've done. It's an important issue. We have much work to do. I'm not a scientist, but we have a fascinating morning ahead. And as a non-scientist, I'm not going to waste much of your time. But it is now the time to act before it is too late. You're going to hear a great deal about that word crisis in wild fish. And I don't think that's an underestimate or an over overstatement. I really believe there is a crisis. And the bringing together these organizations, I think, should be seen as a call to arms and, I hope, a real catalyst for change. The salmon is simply the canary in the coal mine. It's the canary for wild fish and the state of our rivers. The statistics are well known. Make no mistake, the evidence is clear. Evidence is what we work with and what the scientists are going to provide us to work with. The critical state of our rivers is going to be talked about and evidenced in some of the statistics that are brought forth today. And you should be under no illusion that what starts in the river goes on out into the estuaries and the sea. They're damaged by farming practices, pollution, abstraction, you name it, barriers, dams. It is a real challenge for our smokes and power to survive. The 25-year environmental plan introduced earlier this year by the previous government made hardly any mention of fresh water. That's an unimaginable miss. Fresh water is pretty essential to all of us in this room. It's completely critical to our wildlife in rivers. It has to change, and I believe it will do, but it will only do so with the base, on the basis that we really put some lobby pressure behind it. There will be a change in the agricultural payment system going forward, as I expect, and I expect most of you expect. That is a real chance for us to make things happen. Fish farming practices have to change. We know that. Everyone is aware of the consequences of what is happening. And thanks to the efforts of one of our members, Salmon and Trout, it's pretty visible in, in, in the courts and in various arguments. We will work to together to make those changes happen. So what is happening in our rivers is a warning. It's not just in the UK. It's a warning to all from the east coast of the USA to the rivers of Norway and indeed later today you'll hear about those in Iceland. We have to identify the manageable risks faced by wild fish, whether it's in their spawning grounds or on the, in the rivers or in the estuaries. The power survival and the smoke survival are subjects that are beginning, we're beginning to know a lot more about. It's uncomfortable news. We need to understand and learn much more about salmon and sea trout habits and the routes they take as they enter the sea and the oceans beyond. With the aid of technology and acoustic tagging, we are learning again. And there are already some surprises. We have a lot more to learn. So the feeding grounds themselves are obviously at risk of climatic change. Again, the fisheries policy will need to be lobbied. And you'll understand more about that when you hear from one of our speakers. The key tool we have is the likely suspects framework, an acknowledged tool by others in the industry. And, and you'll hear a great deal this morning about that. It's proven, and it will allow us to set the priorities. 
So every single one of us who's ever held a rod will have our own theories, and we hold them very dear. Why are the wild fish disappearing in front of our eyes? What has happened to these rivers? Those theories are ones that we either have to prove or debunk. We cannot do it just with theory. So given the scale of the problem and the urgency with which it needs to be addressed, we need to be much more ambitious and we have no time to waste. We need to accelerate the funding and the consequent research. So the Missing Salmon Alliance brings together the expertise, resources, commitment from all the members, who well, I won't read out, but you know them all well. All of these organizations are busy on existing projects. We have much more work to do, as I say, and they're going to be busier. But now, now we're going to be working together, sharing knowledge and practices, bringing other organizations, some of whom are in the room today, both local and importantly international, not to talk about change, but to deliver the change we need to make. Change that is so evidently and urgently needed now. We aim to invite other countries and their organizations to support us, to work with us. And our alliance has already in, in resulted in some support coming forward. To do a bit of housekeeping, we're setting up to prioritize and co-manage work streams and avoid duplication. The steering committee will be advised by the technical committee it will include the CEOs of the respecting organizations and the technical committee will include the leading scientists from each organization. The tasks will be executed by the teams in the existing organizations. So we'll have a minimal staff led by Colin Bull, who you'll hear from later today, who will be the principal investigator of the data we need, who will have two or three assistants. We'll probably have a discussion about how many. But we're not building another organization. We are using the existing organizations to do the work. So the government policymakers will be presented with evidence-based scientific findings. We needn't just be harbingers of doom and despair, wringing our hands, but we need to seek to create a wider understanding in society that will help us champion the cause of environmental risks and wild fish. And if a young girl from Sweden can make the impact she has, surely we can do something. And we will, as I said, have the benefit of evidence-based research and the consequent authority that brings with it. So none of us can afford to be apathetic or let apathy get in, our, get in the way. And we have a chance by coming together to drive these changes. And much as I, like many of you, enjoy fishing abroad, that is simply not the answer. We can fish abroad, but believe me, that will not last for long. The trend line is clear, and are we to be the last generation that has enjoyed the pleasure of fishing? Well, time's not on our side, but if we were to reverse these depressing tre trends, which we must, we need to do this now. This is just the start of what will be a five to 10 year task. It'll cost money, quite a lot of money. As I'm sure you understand, technology doesn't come cheap. We need your financial support, both now and probably in the future. It'll cost money because, not just because scientists need money, but we need to expand the programs. We will report regularly on our progress to our supporters. We need you to spread the word amongst the community as large, at large, and we have no time to waste. But just before I leave you, thank you all for joining us today and your interest in this cause. I am asking you unashamedly to help us. Now I'm going to sit down now, but just before I do, I'd like to introduce a short video which is going to be beamed in here from the Prince of Wales. He's very sorry he's not with you today, but he's just traveling, traveling back, or at, on, in the process of traveling back from places like the Solomon Islands, and I'm sure he would rather be here, but he can't be.
Ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely disappointed that I cannot be with you today and send you my profound apologies, as I fear I shall be in the process of returning from the other side of the world. Um, my introduction to salmon fishing started on the River Dee at the age of, I think, seven, and made an indelible impression on me. Since then, I have fished whenever I have had the opportunity and have followed the fate of salmon stocks closely as patron of the Atlantic Salmon Trust for the last 35 years. In 1967, the year the Trust was founded, almost 8,000 salmon were caught on the Dee in Aberdeenshire, of which about a quarter were spring fish. Fifty years on, the total catch has declined by a half, and the proportion of spring fish is down even further. This dispiriting downward trend is replicated over the whole of the United Kingdom, and for that matter, all around the Atlantic, with the total population of adult salmon reported to have declined from 10 million in 1985 to less than 3 million today. Against this background, I could not be more pleased that the, the Atlantic Salmon Trust has been joined in this forum by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, uh, Salmon and Trout Conservation, and the Angling Trust. Having our, our four leading salmon conservation organizations working together through the Missing Salmon Alliance, with support from both the private and public sectors, is hugely encouraging. We all understand by now that the reasons why the Atlantic salmon is in decline all around the Atlantic basin are complex and take their toll everywhere, from the headwaters of spawning streams, via rivers and coastal waters, to the remotest feeding areas at sea. Climate change, uh, unsustainable exploitation, dams, pollution, aquaculture, water extraction, uh, and an imbalance between predators and prey species all play a part at different times. And of course, all these factors interact with each other. The situation is certainly complex, but if we do not adequately start to address this long list of problems, the very future of a species that has been swimming our oceans and seas for over six million years will be in jeopardy. Ladies and gentlemen, we simply cannot allow this to happen in our lifetime. Understanding the situation in much more detail is the essential first step to reversing the decline. However difficult that may seem, the evidence from detailed studies of other fish whose future was in question, such as cod, is that it is by no means impossible that the key is to use the now established likely suspect framework to gather the evidence and devise management solutions. You will uh, hear more about this framework during the course of today's events, but in essence, it breaks down the salmon's life journey into different domains and establishes the quantum and cause of mortality within each domain so that managers can be provided with the practical tools they need. Every headwater, every main stem, every estuary and the wide spaces of the Atlantic Ocean will each present its own specific problems and require its own individual solutions to reverse the trends that have been apparent for so long and uh, that are causing such concern. There is also, <clears throat> dare I say it, more at stake here than the fate of the Atlantic salmon. This species that we all care about so much is a type of aquatic canary for wider environmental change. The song it is singing tells us a great deal about the state of our freshwater and marine environments and the need to behave responsibly to look after our natural resources. If we cannot limit climate change to a manageable level, which I must add needs to be a great deal lower than the current appalling trajectory, 
and stem the accompanying rapid loss of biodiversity, the consequences will be unthinkable. So, as well as understanding the story of the salmon, we need to reflect carefully on what it is telling us about our own precarious situation. Ladies and gentlemen, reversing the decline in the Atlantic salmon and protecting this iconic species for future generations is a hugely important task. It is also formidably difficult. However, I'm convinced it can be done if we combine energy, endeavor, science, technology, and common sense, and if we start now. I can only wish you all a fruitful day's discussion and much look forward to learning of the progress you make.